Greetings, I'm Rob Chappers. Probably should have checked the tuning on this one just before we started, but greetings, I am the captain. Tuning don't matter, it's the feeling that matters <laughs> instead. It's not the winning, it's the taking part. It's the taking part. Where are you, internet? Tell me. You were at Anderton's in Guildford and England. You're sitting That's in your you bedrooms. Just in case you weren't sure. Having a duvet day. A duvet day. I suspect day. where we should be. This is going, mm, just going to watch oh, some Chappers and the captain. Bit of no man's sky. Oh, no. It is a good game. It is a good game. It is a good game. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, everyone feel, everyone say, ah, oh, Philippe, because A, it's like his shoulder. B, he's not played PlayStation since he had a little girl. Yeah, all the, all the daddies in the house will be knowing what I'm talking about. Anyway, oh, getting forward to the game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Leo Fender, arguably the most influential, you know, uh, guitar designer of all time. And he really basically had three guitar companies that he was synonymous with. This one, La Fender Hour. This one, La Musique Man, Le Homme de Musique. <laughs> um, and this one, GNL. How would you say GNL in French? G GNL. And L. Yeah, we've anyway, I don't know why we're speaking in French. Um, Parce que le français, c'est la langue d'amour. There's about 50 million pages on Wikipedia and the like about what he actually did at each of those companies and why. And Actually, I think you find it's 4,328,000. Right. And Sterling Ball summed it up nicely by saying, we'll never really know because most of the people who are around at that time are all dead now. So it's just, it is what it is. Um, did he say it like, you'll never know? Or did possibly. he go like, we'll never know? We'll never. I think Which of those was it? Was it A or B? I think it was probably the latter. The latter, okay. No. Um, and we know that whilst uh, Leo was at these three different companies, he designed uh, lots of, well, not lots, you know, a few different shapes and he designed bases as well and all that kind of like. And he made lots of amps, which were very, very cool. But I think, you know, the, the guitar that we said yesterday, I think, you know, if you've got a hundred people that didn't know anything about guitar to draw an electric guitar, that's probably what they'd draw. Badly, yeah. I expect. It would be really like bad. Me. It would just be like a block that's, that's and then what a line. To mind. And then they'd put some things at the end. And whenever they pick up a guitar for the first time, they do that. And they, they do. think it's going to do go, a thing. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't do a thing. It's like when you give a that. mouse to a granddad, but then he goes on the screen like this. I think he bit his head off and went, mm. No, no, not um, an actual mouse. Yeah. So look, now, uh, we decided rather than going and buy full fat American custom shop versions of all these things. Rory, here's a basketball moment for you. <laughs> or a beach ball even, whatever you do. Uh, we just go affordable. So we've got a Mexican standard Fender Strat. We've got um, a Sterling by Music Man Cutlass. And we've got a couple of GNLs actually. We've got a, a Legacy and an S500, which really, uh, I mean, arguably the, the Legacy is the sort of closest thing and then the S500's got um, different pickups and, and a sort of a different tone circuit in it, but whatever. Different neck as well, but uh, you'll hear them all. And we were just gonna whiz through them. Some tones on this and this and this and some comments and criticism from Rob about which we like the best. They're all about the same price. So it's criticism from Rob. On and things me. We, <laughs> and Leah. Yes, we, uh, will, we will critique them. I'm using a boogie. Wow. Because the amp I used for almost my entire teenage years was a boogie. Actually, it was a Studio Point 2.2. Studio 22. Called? Studio 22, mm -hmm. one by 12 combo, and I played that with a Telecaster, and it gave me the We've horn. We've got a second-hand Studio 22 preamp in stock if you want one of those. You're kidding me. Nope. It was here yesterday anyway. So, really? Yeah. You could a little bit of boutique vintage valve preamp back in the day, you know, like. Wow. But it's not in the combo killer. with the. No. Um... I haven't got a second-hand combo, just got a, right. uh, a rack. That's a bit well. Why you don't you could, try and sell me you things? Could put that I'll in your buy studio things with your two with like a two notes, you know, thing. And anyway, we digress. That's exciting. We anyway, digress. so I got the boogie out, and then obviously this is a Fonday Strat, and yeah. I've been using an AC15 both days. I really like it with the same pedals, which is an EP Boost, a Guru Sexy Drive Mark II, an MXR Carbon Copy Analog Delay. Right. Uh, this amp isn't clean at the moment, but you know.
I guess if you don't know what a Strat sounds like, it's, it's like you really haven't started your musical electric guitar adventure, have you? It's just... Yeah, although I read a comment on one of my YouTube videos yesterday that said, oh, who, I don't understand why people like Fender Strats, Tellys and Les Pauls. They look so the same. They look like every other guitar. And I was like, <laughs> you can f*** off and die. And I, love the, <laughs> I love the, yeah, Strats, Telecasters and Les Pauls are so boring because they just look like every yeah. other guitar. It's guitars not, look boring because fault. they look like guitars. They invented it. It's like, what yeah. are you talking about? It's like, yeah, no. classic. Anyway, Classic there we go. Classic comment section, 10 year old. Um, That's a Fender Strat. You know what a Fender Strat sounds like. So the Cutlass is the next one. Che I guess the, um, this is a Mexican standard. <laughs> the Strat has always been, and hopefully always will be, like a bolt-on neck design, three single coil, tremolo system. The machine heads along one side of the headstock, call that sort of six aside. Um, <laughs> and that's what it sounds like. Because, this one has a, Palferro fretboard would have been Rosewood in the day, but we're starting to see more, more and more manufacturers move away from Rosewood as it becomes more difficult to um, set, you know, export and import around the world. If you ever segue into a career as a, like an Ibiza DJ, mm. I think Tremolo System would be a cool name for you. Yeah. Yeah. Tremolo System. Like you, 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 tremolo. There's definitely. I want a radio jingle, Rory. I want a radio jingle. There's definitely. There's definitely. I want a radio jingle, radio jingle. There's definitely. There's definitely. 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 I want a radio jingle. Tremolo. Anyway, that's your. Um. So that's that. What did Leo sort of really try and do on the uh, the Cutlass? Well, I guess it's a slightly more compact body shape. It's got the Music Man uh, headstock, the four and two uh, design. Yeah, because Still, he was contracted to not compete with Fender. Uh, that yeah. So he had a ten year non compete clause after ten he uh, sold Fender to <laughs> CBS. Uh, so he wasn't publicly working with Music Man, I think, until 75, but I think he was working with them before. But the, certainly, I think, coming up with a, with a classic-looking headstock is unbelievably difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, but Music Man, 100 million percent, did that. And they've, you know, they've patented the, the I know, 4 and 2, don't you? I know, because we tried to we do tried, that yeah, and they wouldn't let um, us do it. So I didn't realise, so that's why you'll only see Music Man with the sort of 4 and 2. Very clever, again, it's all about trying to keep the strings straight across the uh, the nut to keep the tuning as stable as possible. Um, the only other thing on here which really sort of looks different is, again, he was a he was a kind of great inventor, really, Leo, a real tinkerer. So you'll see the trem systems evolve. So this one now is a, a two-pivot trem system rather than the six on uh, bolts on, on there, but... Of course, more um, is more. Actually, you should play this because then people will get the relative oh, okay, um, the relative tone tone. So we use different amps. Alignment. It's, it's all a bit pointless, really, isn't it? Um, like a broken <laughs> pencil. Don't say that word, Peter Honore. <laughs> you know, I think if John Lennon had been alive now, he'd have rewritten Imagine to go. Imagine there's no tone. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy if you try. Um, anyway, I think you'd have more pressing issues at hand. Lee. You're probably. Right. So that's cool. Um, not, I'm not a big fan of the colour. No, I mean, actually, that's of course. Three-day old salmon. Rob, Rob is uh, <clears throat> absolutely right, and Rory may or may not put some stuff on screen now. No. Of course, Fender, the Fender Strat has got to be available in like a 
thousand different colors and price points from 99 pound squires through to thousands and thousands of pound custom shots loads of different colors whatever maybe on screen now we'll just show you the different colors that the current mexican standard strats available in um, there are less options in in the music man range but there are uh, there is a sub a sterling range which is more affordable there's the sterling sort I mean, of middle of the road range and then you, of course you've got full american it is worth full pointing out a couple of, of mm. parts of this that probably we slipped by locking tuners has it and a lordy and an adjustable they wouldn't have been on an original that probably no. not a leo fender idea uh, that one. and an adjustable thing down here for the truss rod and a really nice tremolo mm. that does trams Does that kind of thing really good? I'd love to know again in the comment section below if you're a music man expert. Was the um, easy access truss rod thing is that an old, is that an old music man thing? I suspect not. I think that's again a more recent thing. How much does this cost? These are all about five hundred. In fact, this is the dearest. I think it's like five seventy nine. Um, this is just over five hundred, and these are four ninety nine kind of money. Right, um, but. Uh, there is an interesting, I think the very slightly narrower. Yeah, for sure it's narrow. On, yeah. on the neck, that's another Music Man kind of vibe. Um, and everyone keeps telling me that it's like, you know, it's dangerous because if you get used to a Music Man neck, you ain't going back. That's what I've heard. That is what I've heard. Oh, what should we do the GNL, Lee? <laughs> <laughs> the GNL's much heavier. I wonder what these are made of. Uh, perhaps again, Rory could put some specifications on the screen, but this is this is the legacy. <coughs> it's definitely heavier. Uh, if anything, it's probably the biggest of the three guitars. That's isn't what it? she said. Um, marginally, just very very slightly larger. I think the GNL is, and I think that comes through even on the neck. I think that the neck is very slightly wider. Do you think it was um, really nice of Leo to put George's initial first? George Fullerton, Leo Fender, they co-owned GNL. George Fullerton and Dale Height. Dale Height, you're right. They were all. Don't forget uh, Dale. These were all guys that were around, I think, in the Fender days, weren't they? They were yeah. all like, you know, part of. It's. I guess it's like that thing, isn't it? Somebody's name goes above the door, but it doesn't mean that they're the only people that make the magic happen. Suck Just it like out. Chapman guitars. Right, and Andersons, yeah. and and Marshall, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm. Lots of very, very talented and people critical to the success of these businesses. So here's how the GNL sounds, okay? You know, you know what? This is literally, I think, Leo Fender's thought process. Leo's in, worst nightmare. In like, a, in, in like 30 seconds. It's like, wow, designed this really, really amazing guitar. I know, I'll just change a few things. No, I like the first one better. I'll just do it again. <laughs> it's like, that's literally, that's it. Leo Fender's, <coughs> that's it. The, the evolution of the strap. Well, you heard it here, folks. Uh, that's, uh, that's Lee's. Uh, so on, on the GNL, what is it that feels different about neck. either of these two? Bigger neck. Bigger neck. Uh, it just feels more substantial. It's like yeah. you've gone from homemade organic thin crust pizza to full on Chicago deep pan. You want yeah. the deep pan sometimes, you know what I'm saying? It's got that bang, tidy feel. It's heavy, it's thick. It is heavy. I like right? it. I really yeah. like it. I'm a big fan of GNL uh, because it was Leo's final form. Yeah, I, I must admit, this is where. Uh, my only real criticism of GNL, and this is on the the, the uh, legacy and the tribute, and also the asset stuff. Some of the hardware and the headstock shapes and things, 
I just think look a bit stuck in the 70s and the early 80s, whereas the sort of the, I think- That the doesn't look is, stuck in the 60s or 70s at it's, all, it's Luke. it's timeless because it's been so popular and used. No, I think it's just that when you look at Offender, you recall a long mm. list of artists that you have emotional the, feelings towards and then you Music Man for me looks much more contemporary than GNL though, even though some of these designs are older. It is, it is because you associate it with Petrucci. Funny, isn't it? You're probably right. Everything is associated with something. It's but, the so in all, profiling. I'm just saying, whilst I've enjoyed playing all three of these guitars, and I you get prefer that, that one. yeah, I get that there is, you know, everybody is going to have their own thing. Yeah, I would still go ye oldie fashioned Fender. Right. So I, mm. I want a hybrid Frankenstein of all three. So I love the feel of this neck. Yeah. Uh, but I prefer the body and the tones from this one. And I love that tremor and I love the locking tuners. So I want a hybrid Frankenstein. Well, Thumbs up for a, for a, a rebuild. Now. If only Leo was still alive, he'd have probably knocked one up this afternoon and you, you could have had it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, look, that's <clears throat> it. Well, let's jam out and I'll use uh, that. I, no, I'll use this because I haven't used it yet. All right, man. And you use either one of these two because you... I use the music, man. Go on, do it then. I don't, I don't play do music, it. man, enough. Do you know? it. Do it. Bacardi Cole. Can we have another track from the wonderful new uh, album? Pete Honore, backing track backing track that, album. Uh, Pete Honore's By the written. way, if you are an aspiring guitar player or even a very good guitar player, That's my and you would require uh, uh, backing tracks to play along to, look no further than Peter Honore's new backing track album. What's it called, Pete? It's Anderson's TV Guitar Jam Tracks. Anderson's TV Guitar Jam Tracks. It really should be called Peter Honore wrote all of this. <laughs> And he's selling it through Anderton's TV guitar jam track. Basically, they're really good. Can I can I just say as well, just before anybody sort of gives me a hard time about it, even though we've called it the backing tracks of Anderton's TV and everything, it absolutely is Pete's baby in every uh, Pete's in every got way. enough babies, man. No sort more of, babies you know, to Pete. Emotionally, financially, everything, it's his baby. Everybody, thanks for watching the Anderton's Guitar YouTube channel. If you're a drummer or a keyboard player or interested in music technology, you might find one of our other channels interesting, and I'll put details of those in the description below. If you want to find out more about the products we've just featured, please click here. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like this, please click here. 
if you wanna watch another video on our guitar channel, click down here. And to subscribe to our guitar channel, click here. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.